Israelis like impossible problems, and you really see that here today. You know, people ask me, what's happened over the last 10 years? And I wish they could just walk in this room. I wish they could just walk in this building and see what's happening. I mean, this, this is, you know, if I could imagine what Startup Nation actually looks and feels like, this is it. <clears throat> and John, I, I can't think of anyone right now who's doing more to build Startup Nation. I, I just wrote the story. The hard part is the building, and that's what you guys are doing here. So when Startup Nation came out 10 years ago, we thought that it would come out in Hebrew maybe, and we'd spend a few weeks you know, talking about it, and that would be about it. Well, it came out in Chinese before it came out in Hebrew. <laughs> and it's out in more than 30 languages, including Mongolian. Anyone from Mongolia? Here, maybe? Yeah? OK. Um, we had no clue that this was going to happen. We thought that the story of Israel, our innovation story, was so unique that most countries wouldn't really think that it's relevant to them. But as I traveled around the world, what I found out is that every country wants to be innovative. And what they did is they thought, OK, we want Silicon Valley. And then they thought, we're not the United States. We can't do that. And then they thought, well, what about Israel? Here's this tiny country. No resources. Terrible neighborhood. They did it. Maybe we can do it. And actually, they were right. Because over the last 10 years, the world's changed a lot. Back then, Israel and Silicon Valley were basically the two large, diverse ecosystems in the world. That was about it. Since then, you have big ecosystems in Delhi, in Beijing, in London, in New York, in Berlin, Paris. I've seen startups in Ho Chi Minh City, in Medellin, Colombia, in Nairobi, everywhere I go. And this is amazing. It's amazing opportunity for Israel. But you know, in this kind of world, what's different about Israel? What's still different? Well. We have a lot of weaknesses, but actually, those weaknesses are also our strengths. We like to argue. We like to debate. We're loud. We're stubborn. We're impatient. We have no respect for authority. It's great to work with us. <laughs> but all these things are great for doing startups. Um, but we're also driven, and this is the key thing is that we have a word in Hebrew that doesn't exist in English. It's called misimatiut. Misimatiut. It means mission-oriented. Israelis know what a mission is. It's something that's not about if. It's only about how. And I'm amazed, as I talk to the startups today, what they take on. I mean, Israelis like impossible problems, and you really see that here today. The thing is that every country has its own strengths, based on its own history, its own culture, its own people. And the problem is, is that we tend to be blind to our own strengths. We complain about what we're not so great at, and we, we just ignore what we know how to do. And that's a problem because two things. One is our innovation systems are built on our strengths, and second is, the great untapped opportunity is to combine our strengths. So I think maybe when you look at Israel, it's not so much about doing things like Israel as doing things with Israel. That's the untapped opportunity. In fact, we have more opportunity, we have more need in this decade to come than in any decade in history. We don't have to accept the fact that we drop like flies from heart disease and cancer. We can detect these things early 
before we feel anything, and we can stop them. We don't have to keep educating our kids for the past. We can care more about what they can do and who they are than what they know. We can transform education. We don't have to spend our lives in traffic. We can not only go beyond the driver, we can go beyond the car. These are solvable problems, but we don't have that much time. They're getting worse, and we need to accelerate. So this is the decade, this is the turning point when we have to do that acceleration. Three weeks ago, my father, Max Singer, Zichrono Livracha, died. He was a young 88. Last year, he was at this conference. He was a bit of a curiosity. He, you know, was here in, the, in his cane, and I, I, uh, I left him for a few minutes. When I came back, these uh, 20-somethings were surrounding him talking about their startups. So he knew how to stay young. The way to stay young is to be grounded in history and in the present, but to live in the future. And he knew, he knew how to do that. And that's what this country knows how to do. To those of you who've chosen this place as your home, welcome, good luck. It's not always easy. For those of you who it's the first time here, I know you'll be back. It's amazing. So welcome. We are Startup Nation because we have a purpose. And now part of our purpose is to be Startup Nation. We can start solving these huge problems in the world together. In fact, if we combine our strengths, we can take on these tough challenges and we can solve them. Let's build a future together. Thank you. Mm -hmm.